In this lecture, I want to talk about Bernoulli's equation, but first we're going to remind about Euler's equation. Euler's equation is used to predict pressure variation in moving fluids. So if we begin with a frictionless steady flow of a fluid along a streamline and Newton's second law, force is equal to mass times acceleration, we can derive Euler's one-dimensional equation. So here we have our fluid element acting along some random streamline. The fluid element itself is going to have a width ds and is going to have a change in height dz and it is going to have a self weight of specific weight da ds where da is this cross-sectional area right here in order for the fluid to move we need to have forces acting on it so that force is going to be the pressure acting over the cross-sectional area and it's going to change as we move up pressure plus change in pressure acting over the cross-sectional area. So there's our force. If we sum our forces due to pressure, I'll subscript that with a P for pressure. We have P dA minus P plus dP dA. And this is going to give us minus dp dA, so the change in pressure acting over the cross-sectional area. This is not an equilibrium, this is just summing those pressure forces. The work of the weight is going to be the specific weight dA dS, and then that change in height over that distance. So we end up with gamma dA dz, or acting in the negative direction, by the way, because it's pointing down, or rho g dA dz, if we want that density in there. And we do, because remember, mass is just going to be rho dA ds without that gravity. Recall that acceleration is the change in velocity over distance. So if I go back to Newton's second, force is equal to mass times acceleration, we have the force acting on the liquid, which is that change in pressure over the cross-sectional area. We also have the weight so that's minus rho g dA dz, and that needs to equal mass rho dA ds times acceleration v dV ds. Now all this so we can say at one specific point in our control volume, we can simplify this to Euler's one-dimensional equation, pressure divided by specific weight, plus the change in height, plus the velocity squared over 2g is equal to Zeller rho. The one-dimensional equation assumes a frictionless steady flow of a fluid along a streamline, and the forces accelerating the fluid are pressure. This equation applies to compressive and incompressive fluids, but it's very limited and very ideal. So we're going to take Euler's equation to the next level with Bernoulli's equation. And there's a couple of assumptions. First, viscosity is negligible. Second, the flow is steady. Third, the fluid is incompressible. Fourth, the equation applies along a streamline. And last, no energy is added or removed. Remember this fluid element acting along a streamline that we used to derive Euler's equation? 
Well, in a real fluid, we are going to have some friction. And that friction is causing shear stress, tau. So adding this now, we're going to have our change in pressure over the specific weight, plus that change in height, plus our velocity. And this is now going to work against those shear stresses. Here the P is for perimeter. And over here, this one's pressure. Now if I rearrange this equation and replace that shear force with HF, which re represents head loss due to friction, and this is over a specific length, so that DS has now changed to an L length over a specified time, we're going to come up with Bernoulli's equation, which is Pressure 1 over the specific weight plus the initial elevation plus the initial velocity squared over 2g is equal to the outgoing pressure over the specific weight plus the outgoing elevation, the exiting velocity squared over 2g, and then hf, which we're going to call the wall friction head loss. Here we have a tank that is full of water and it has a four inch diameter siphon. You see it coming up over the edge of the tank and siphoning out. So the tank is open to the air and the siphon is open to the air, frictionless siphon. Find the rate of discharge and the pressure head at B. The rate of discharge is going to be Q. And because we do not have a change in mass, we can assume that this water is incompressible. So we will have our equation is equal to VA. Now I have A. A is going to be the cross-sectional area of the pipe. So that's going to be pi r squared for the pipe. But I do not have V exiting the pipe. So that's what I need to find. So if I call the tank position 1, and I call the exit for the hose position 2, okay, I'm also going to set up a datum. And the datum is going to be ground zero. So datum is zero elevation. So B is going to be positive four, and that's going to make my exit for the siphon at negative 16. I can set up the datum anywhere that I want. I can set it at the very top and have everything negative, or the very bottom and everything positive. It does not matter as long as we're consistent with where our datum is. So if I've got the tank intake at one, the outgo at two, I'm going to use Bernoulli's equation and let's start making some things go away. So the tank, so this would be the tank side and this is going to be the end of the siphon. All right, it said that it was a frictionless siphon so there's not going to be any loss due to friction. Okay, we are open to the atmosphere for the tank we are open to the atmosphere for the end of the siphon. The tank is going to start at elevation zero. Okay, and velocity one, we have a standing water tank. So my velocity is equal to zero. So that means I am left with the elevation change to the end of the siphon and then the velocity coming out of the siphon, which is what I'm looking for. So plugging in my known values, I have negative 16 feet from my datum to the bottom of the siphon plus V2 squared, which is what we're looking for, uh, divided by 2 times gravity. We're in U.S. units, so I'm using 32.2 feet per second squared. Solving for velocity, I get 32.1 feet per second. So now that I know that velocity, I can go back and plug it into my flow rate. So flow is going to equal to my velocity, 32.10 feet per second, times my area, pi times the radius. If it's a 4-inch diameter, then the radius is 2 inches squared. 
I've got feet and inches, so let's throw in a conversion. And solving for the flow rate, I find it's 2.80 feet cubed per second. For pressure head at B, we're going to have the same approach, except now I need to label U3, and we can either go from 1 to 3 or from 2 to 3. We're going to get the same answer as long as we're consistent with our math. I'm going to go from 1 because everything's 0, and I like zeros. Pressure head, by the way, is P over gamma. Going from 1 to 3, 3 being point B, remember 1 is the reservoir, so there is no pressure because it's open to the atmosphere. That is at our datum, so we're going to start at 0. It is a non-moving reservoir, so our velocity 1 is 0. Um, and we have a frictionless pipe, so we don't have any loss due to friction. We are looking for the pressure head, which is P3 over gamma. And over here, because the pipe diameter is consistent and we have an incompressible fluid with no loss of friction due to the pipe, our velocity head for 3 is going to be the same as our velocity head for 2. So solving for our head at B, which is P3 over gamma, we're going to have um, minus Z3 moving it to the other side of the equation. Z3 is 4 feet, so this is going to be minus 4 feet when we move it to the other side, minus the velocity, 32.1 feet per second, quantity squared, all over 2 times gravity. And we find that the pressure head at B is negative 20 feet. Let's look at a bend in a gasoline line with an incoming flow rate of 5 cubic feet per second, a cross-sectional area of 0.8 feet squared, and an entrance pressure of 18 psi. Then we're going to go around the corner and drop 12 feet where we have a new cross-sectional area of 0.2 feet squared. We want to find the pressure at point 2 if the head loss between points 1 and 2 is 6 feet. The specific gravity of gasoline is point 8, and we're going to start with Bernoulli's equation. In order to have elevation z, I need to set a datum. This time I'm going to put it at the bottom, but remember it doesn't matter where a datum starts. Pressure 1 we were given as 18 psi over specific gravity, I mean specific weight. So remember specific gravity is the percentage, if you will, of, of water. So if we have specific gravity of 0.8 for gasoline, we're going to multiply that to the specific weight of water, 62.4 pounds per foot cubed. I've got my pressure in pounds per square inch, and I need it in feet, so let's do a conversion. We have 12 inches per foot, and that's squared. Moving to my elevation, with my datum being at the bottom, that means that 1 is at 12 feet, plus velocity 1. I don't have a velocity, but I do have a flow rate. So let's do a little side trip over here. Flow rate is equal to velocity times area. So my velocity is going to equal to my flow rate, 5 cubic feet per second. All over the cross-sectional area, 0 0.8 feet squared. And that's going to give me a velocity of 6.25 feet per second. So that's what's going to go up here, 6.25 feet per second squared all over 2 times gravity is equal to 
Pressure 2, that's what we're looking for. This is still gasoline, so 0 0.8 times 62.4 pounds per foot cubed. Plus, this is at our datum, so that's going to be 0. Flow rate is not going to change through the system, so we're going to be using our same equation here. But this time, we have a new cross-sectional area. So we have 25 feet per second. And then we were given that head loss of 6 feet. I'm going to scooch that all in there. Okay. So here's all of the inputs that we were given and solving for pressure 2. We get 2,440 pounds per square foot or 16.9 pounds per square inch. 